All right, it is confession time. I've not kept this a secret, and many of you may already know, but I have sinned. I have gone to the dark side, as it were. I have purchased my first modern Mac computer. My first of only two Macs that I have ever owned, the first being a blue-colored iMac G4, which I stupidly got rid of when I was younger, uh, I believe when I was in my first year of college, f got rid of it for space, and I have regretted that ever since. I have seriously regretted that, as it is very hard to get a hold of one, and I would love to have one nowadays. But I have purchased, earlier this year, a 2013 MacBook Pro. This is the 13.3 inch. It has the fourth gen uh, Intel Core i5 processor, so it has the same uh, processor as the, it's the late 2013, so it has the same processor as the 2014 model. And it was about 500 bucks, which I am not a fan of, especially paying that for such an older laptop. But that is my Windows laptop brain thinking as Apple MacBooks, I'm not going to say they hold their value, but they definitely hold their cost much longer than normal Windows computers. But yeah, it, it, it was a used model from some surplus cell I picked it up on eBay, has a little bit of scuffing on the top hood, and then there's like a little, like something poked the screen. But otherwise, it's in very, very good condition. It could use a battery swap, but it has served me very well thus far, and I'm actually pretty happy with it. I, <laughs> I wasn't sure I'd like a modern Mac machine, and for a laptop, for something that I take when my wife has classes or when I want to go somewhere and write some scripts and check some emails and do basic stuff, it has actually been a very satisfying computer. Again, it has a 13.3 inch screen, which is a little bit smaller than I thought I'd tolerate, but it is a very good size for what it is. And the screen is very high quality. It looks really, really nice. Has a 2.4 gigahertz, uh, I believe it's a dual core, uh, fourth gen Core i5 processor, four gigs of RAM and a 128 gig solid state drive, which is all right. I'm not storing a whole bunch on it. Cause again, this is old enough that I'm not really going to be doing much video editing on it. Like it could theoretically handle some, but I'm not going to bother. And the screen resolution kind of prevents that from being super viable. Cause technically it has a 16 by 10 or eight by five aspect ratio monitor, which I'm a huge fan of. It is one of my favorite aspect ratios for productivity. The native res is actually 2560 by 1600, which is fairly high resolution. However, it has a DPI scaling of 200%. So the resolution that the Mac OS reports is 1280 by 800, which is much, much lower. Uh, <laughs> and it's really frustrating trying to figure, to, trying to navigate and configure the resolution on the Mac side of things, because of that scaling factor, it actually like treats it as 1280 by 800, and the uh, the like screen output when it's outputting over HDMI, it doesn't have like modern HDMI standards, so like newer ones, and so it can't even output like higher resolutions at the full 2560 by 1600 60 hertz. It, it was a huge nightmare. I really I complained a lot about Windows scaling, but the way Mac handles scaling is substantially, substantially worse. <laughs> but it looks nice, it looks nice, and that upscale resolution looks nice, but that 1280 by 800 equivalent means I can't even fit much of like Premiere's user interface on the screen at this point. So I primarily use it for writing and day-to-day -day work, at which point it's actually plenty fast for that, doesn't get too loud or warm, and is fairly lightweight to have in my bag while still having plenty of ports. It's got two Thunderbolt 2 ports, full-size USB ports, a SD card reader, uh, a full-size HDMI port, although I believe that's a little le loose if I like touch the cable when I'm trying to record stuff, the feed cuts out, so not the best cable, but you can just get a uh, mini display port to HDMI adapters for those Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 2 ports, so that's handy. It's got a headphone jack. It's got a webcam. The webcam isn't great, but it was probably okay for the time for a 2013 laptop webcam, especially since uh, prior to whenever they upgraded the FaceTime webcam for this model, whenever they started using this version of the webcam, MacBooks had really bad webcam for a long time. They were like 640 by 480 only. So this one can do 720p. It's probably interpolated or upscaled from a lower resolution. And it's clearly not 30 FPS, as you can tell by my very whooshy hand motion. So, eh, it doesn't really compete today with 
actual cameras, but for a laptop webcam, it might still match the standard. Now, of course, it's not at the keyboard, so it's not the worst angle in the world, but this is not a very flattering angle. To get it up like a traditional desktop mounted webcam, you'd need to just hold the laptop up here, which is probably not gonna happen. This one still has the LED logo on the hood, the little Apple logo, which is pretty cool. And the keyboard is backlit. I'll touch more on the keyboard in a second, but it has a backlit keyboard from 2013, which is kind of cool. I like it a lot. It has a lot of polish about it. <laughs> it actually, uh, specs wise, I mentioned it's not going to hold up for a whole lot of video editing, but it does hold up for like average screen capture stuff, either with QuickTime or the new screenshot screen recording tool. I actually just recently made a video on that. Uh, it actually handles that really, really well. And in OBS, there's actually dedicated hardware encoders on that Intel CPU or in the MacBook itself that OBS can recognize and use. And so I can't record like too crazy high resolution or anything, but I did do a microphone review where I had to plug the microphone directly into the MacBook. And so I used the webcam view as well. And it was doing like 720p 30 FPS, full no dropped frames, do that hardware encoder. Kind of neat. Despite its age, I'm actually able to keep it up to date. I actually just updated it to Mojave for the new screen recorder so I could record a video on that. And that was pretty cool. And when I got it, it had uh, Sierra on it and I had to update it to High Sierra. And that took a couple tries and it, it really didn't want to update to High Sierra. But apparently there was a huge, just massive issue with uh, the High Sierra update rollout in the first place. So I was not alone on that, despite thinking it was like for my machine, that was the issue. But Mojave installed immediately, like it installed really quickly and I had no issues. So I've got the dark mode, I've got Siri integration, I've got, although it doesn't have the dedicated chip for Siri like some of the newer ones do, uh, it's got the new screen recorder. I mean, it's got everything. The big issue, if you get one that doesn't install the newer version of Mac OS, is that the App Store only carries the latest versions of apps. So like on an older Mac that isn't on the latest version, you can't install even the free Apple first party applications like iMovie. On an older Mac, you can no longer install iMovie from the App Store because they don't carry a version that supports your processor, which is absurd. Actually, it turns out Apple may have fixed this. I spent months on this old 2009 iMac Pro, well, Mac Pro, uh, trying to install iMovie from the App Store and other related applications. And it said, you cannot install this application because your version of Mac is out of date. And there's plenty of forum threads and things like that of people running into similar issues. However, when I went to screen cap the issue for this video, it actually now lets you download in the most recent compatible version. So kudos to Apple for fixing that after years, I guess. But there's one thing that has me just a huge fan of this computer that is the whole reason I've been using it this whole time, and that is that damn keyboard is amazing. I made a video either early 2017 or maybe late 2016 about my wife's work laptop that she was using for her job at the time, which was a ThinkPad, but it was a newer ThinkPad and it had a chiclet style keyboard instead of the older style, which everyone told me was better. I bought a ThinkPad. It had that style. That's specifically the style I don't want. The chiclet style on that one felt amazing to type on. Not all chiclet keyboards are good by all means, but the one on that ThinkPad was really good. The same thing applies to this MacBook keyboard. It has such a good feeling keyboard, which makes it even more sucky that the newer ones apparently have bad keyboards. I've hear that complaint a lot because for me, my laptop choice is like 99% the typing experience because if I'm going to use a laptop, it means I want a pretty much distraction free area wherein I can type on a nice feeling keyboard for writing scripts, for doing emails and planning out videos. And that MacBook keyboard is amazing for it. It's backlit, it's laid out fairly well, and the typing experience feels really good, even though a lot of keyboards genuinely hurt my hands because I have some joint issues in my hands when it comes to typing, like certain key switches I just can't tolerate for very long, things like that. The keyboard feels amazing. amazing. The touchpad is kind of a disaster though, because you have to two touch to actually like right click. There are plenty of time and there's no dedicated click buttons. I have so many times, even to this day after I've gotten used to it, I will click and drag and it will right click like the first two times. It takes me forever to get click and drag and marking into right click when I want to right click. I don't know why they couldn't have just done right click like everyone else, but that part is extremely frustrating. 
as has been like the switch back and forth between uh, control and command for things going between Windows and Mac. Uh, when we moved earlier in the year, I had to forcibly move very last minute back in May of this year. I actually went a couple weeks without having my desktop computer set up, which was not fun, but to keep up with email and YouTube comments and watching YouTube videos and chatting with people on Discord, I was using the hell out of that MacBook while we were moving and just hanging out at the apartment before I got my desk set up during that time. And it was actually a very enjoyable experience. Like it made that tolerable because it was that much of a joy to use. Very few laptops have had the keyboard that this MacBook has. That ThinkPad I referred to and then the uh, the 14 inch HP Chromebook that I used throughout college from like 2012 to 2014, 15 ish. I made it through the rest of college on a Chromebook and it had the same style keyboard. And that was part of what I loved about it so much was I got a writing computer that had a really good keyboard. So I can't honestly say that I would recommend that someone else go and pay half a thousand dollars for a five year old machine. Honestly, that's a bit insane. And I also can't in good faith recommend anyone buy a modern Mac because of all of the issues that Apple is basically giving themselves in terms of customer support, all of the shortcuts they keep taking on their products, including MacBooks with the keyboards and things like that, the weird pricing that they're doing. Like Apple is making a whole lot of mistakes right now and it's been building up over the past five to 10 years. They've just really been building up so many mistakes. I actually got lucky that this MacBook isn't one of the ones because there was one about 2012 to 2014 ish, I believe that they would, even if you had them powered off or people were putting them in hibernate mode, they would turn themselves back on in people's bags and were melting themselves because they would heat up in the bags. I thankfully did not get one affected by that, but they've made so many random little shortcuts that have impacted things. And then they completely deny it up until the point they can't deny it anymore. And then they are stuck and it's just not a good situation. And so I can't honestly recommend people buy a new one anyway, but if it's an option you're considering, 2013 MacBook has been a good experience for more office use. Again, for gaming, it's completely useless. For modern, heavy video editing stuff, it's not going to be great, especially with no dedicated GPU. But I wanted to share my first experience with my first modern Mac computer ever in my entire life. It's all right. I've been learning Mac OS. I keep wanting to call it OS X, but Mac OS Mojave now, I guess I've been learning it. I enjoy the operating system. I've kind of always enjoy, enjoyed the appeal of it ever since back in like lion days and earlier than that, leopard and lion and all of those. I always, I always used to want to do a hackintosh. And then I tried it a few times and wanted to tear my hair out because of how much of a disaster it was. If you're not specifically buying parts for it. I have, however, heard that hackintoshing is fairly easy on the Z370 platform with my, with an 8,700 K, which is my gaming rig. So maybe I will try hackintoshing that as a separate boot OS just to play with, but we'll see in the future. Wanted to share these thoughts with you. This is Fox talks tech, of course. So I am talking about tech. Let me know your thoughts in the description or comment section down below. Have I gone to the dark side? Am I just an Apple shill now? Am I going crazy? Am I going to start popping up with my iPhone 10 S max XR XXL and my Apple AirPods and my beats and my 2018 touch bars and all of that, or I don't know. Let me know what you think. I will talk at you later.